loneliness. Most of the medications given out are for loneliness. People, people have developed these other phobias and these other issues and these other panic and, and, and a depression and all these other things, but they have usually been as a result of just loneliness, just this dying of loneliness so because they're friendless. I've, I, I've known people who sleep together. They're married. They've been married years, and the husband or the wife, uh, folks, they go to sleep crying at night because they're just lonely. You know what I mean? Just having a warm body next to you doesn't do it. But you know, it's not about sex anymore. It's about, it's about man, somebody talk to me tonight. Say something to me. You know, you know, don't let me go to sleep tonight if I die. Nobody said goodnight to me. You know what I mean? We're just lonely. Are you following me? And we need to, folks, there is a way to begin to heal this. Number one is that we got to admit it exists in our lives. We have to admit that we're in such, such a materialistic powerful and prestigious world that is all about plastic fronts and facades that we always make believe we're okay. We make believe I'm your friend. I make believe everything is okay. I make believe I'm in control, but on the inside I'm just a hurting little baby all by myself. Anybody can say no to that? So they found out that, that the greatest thing happening is loneliness. People are just lonely. And folks, let me tell you something. Nobody knows about loneliness better than Jesus. Nobody knows about being created. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and He was with God in the beginning. All things were spoken into existence by Him. And Genesis chapter 1 says, in the beginning the Spirit of the Lord was moving on the face of the water, and the Word spoke all things into existence. Can you imagine your father telling you you must leave where you are and divest yourself of your omnipotent power and go down and become a mud rat with the other worms down there? Leave me. Can you imagine that kind of loneliness? Having your father send you away. And then if, then if the people he sent you to embraced you and loved you and nurtured you and cared for you and fed you and, and loved you well, well, then maybe that might get through. But look what we did to Jesus. We beat him, slapped him, cursed his name, and denied his authority as the Son of God. So Jesus would know about loneliness, right? Tonight I want to talk about the seven marks of a true friend. Friendship, folks. I know it. At first, this message doesn't seem as if it has anything to do with it. But I want to talk to you about that. I've really been stretching you, and I know I've been hitting you hard, folks. I know some of you say, you know, it's just too much passage in around here. It's just like, I mean, I can't fix what you told me to fix two weeks ago, and you're throwing something else at me. You know, and I'm sorry for you. You're going to have to work harder. Or work smarter, not harder. Right? Work smarter. Give up some of that sin. Give up some of that TV time, and you'll have fellowship time with God. Come on, Amen. Amen. Because if you glue to that a remote, I tell me, if not having batteries for your remote causes a panic attack, you're in trouble. Notice how I try not to stare at any one individual. I just sort of float my eyes at that point. Yeah. A little trick I learned when I was in Philly. Just don't look at anyone when you make statements like that. Seriously, I mean that. You know, and I know that some of you are very, very good about that. But, but I know that some of you still need to work in that area. And I just want to challenge you. Okay? Friendship. If, if, if you Dale Carnegie wrote a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. You know how many copies he sold for last year? Last year, 76 million. So, do the math. 76 million. Soft cover, 695. Hard cover, 1495. 36 million. Doesn't that tell you something? You, you write a book that says, How to Make Friends. Yes, give me the... Give it to me. I, I, I'll take it. I want that book. I want to read that book because all of us have these bouts of loneliness, right? Well, tonight I want to give you six marks of a true friend, you know? And, and uh, you know, did God ever make anything bad? We all have to back that up. And yet, being your pastor, you know, from time to time I'll find a little nugget in the Word that causes me to think. He says, and God made this, and God made that. God made the animals. God made the seeds. God made the plants. God made the trees. God made this. God made the earth, the sky, and the moon, and the sun, and the firmament between. And then he says, and then God made man. Everything else he said, it was good. It was good. It was good. On the second day, it was good. This was good. This was good. Everything he made, he said it was good. Then he said, then he made man. And he said, it is not good that man be alone. Are you following? You see, we were not made. You see, and then he made Eve and gave him somebody. Now, 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 now in the beginning, I, I mean, I mean, and this is just me. This is the stuff that keeps me awake at 2.15 in the morning. Who did Adam and Eve gossip about? Oh, look at that zebra. 
big long neck. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at the lion. Does it, doesn't the lion look a little proud to you, Adam, with his mane and everything? Yeah. What's the hyena laughing about? You know what I mean? Just, just, just stuff like that. You, you ever think about that? They, they, uh, they had nobody to gossip about. does he go uh, right i mean which, which way does it right just just think about that muse on uh, just just meditate on that stuff folks we need to come to a place where we are challenged to begin to think most of us are lonely and we have to gravitate into these shallow friendships folks folks uh, the devil is lying to us listen i'm 43 going on 44 years old in a month which i'll be 44 and and man the amount of friends i could count on my hand one hand are few. Now, don't get, don't take that personal. I'm not saying I don't love you and that many of you are not dear to me. I'm saying outside of the workplace and outside of ministry, somebody I could just say, man, I'm hurting, man. I felt like I wanted to quit last week. You know, that one problem, that one problem, and then these people get involved in politics, and these get involved in this, and before I know it, these are backbiting them, and they're hating them, and before I knew it, they were both hating me. So they unified. They came together to hate me. They couldn't stand each other. I tried to fix it, and they finally came together to hate me in one accord. Right? So I guess I caused unity, right, God? So that's good? Then why do I feel bad? <laughs> that's funny, right? You, you think that's funny. Friendships. Friendships, folks. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says this, and I put it there on your notes. Two are better than one. And from time to time, I will tell you, circle or highlight something. Circle that word. Two are better than one. Circle two. Because they have a good return on their work. If one falls down, his friend and then underline can help him up. But pity the man who falls down and has no one to help him out. Folks, that's what I want to talk about tonight. Is a friendless man a woman? God's word says, if you want friends, show thyself friendly. If you save, let your face know. Smile. Smile a little bit. If you're born again, inform your face. So the rest of us don't think you got a wet noodle stuck in your ear or something? The first thing that you need to do if you want to uh, develop long-lasting friendships, and listen, I'm talking about not, not romantic ones. I'm talking about friends. How many of you can really use a couple of friends? Just, just, just honestly. Okay, with the rest of the people who, uh, who are not just liars but just have broken arms, please try to raise something. You know what I mean? It just think about that. In order to develop lasting friendships and intimate bonds, something where we're not just a, a superficial friend, but where I share intimacy with you, where, where I'm close to you, where I can share stuff with you, where I feel like it's okay to share my heart with you. And I want to give you the six marks of a real friend. Some of you may have to uh, reevaluate some of your friends. But you just have to deal with that, because I'm here to preach the truth, not to be popular. Okay? When I'm behind this desk, I'm not here to be your friend. Don't mistake that for a minute. I need you to love me, but, I, but, but I'm not here to be your best buddy. Number one is in order to develop lasting friendships, I must be committed. Committed. Everybody here ought to know what that word means because I preach it in code red a whole lot. Committed means to surrender yourself into the hands of another for safekeeping. Commitment. Stop and think about that, folks. Uh, 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 there, there needs to be a commitment. But in our society today, here, look. This is our society today. We're in a throwaway society. It's trash, you throw it out. Think about this for a second. Think about it, commitment. And then I want to share something. Think about this for a moment. Stay with me here. People today will share their life with you. They will unload everything, stuff that ain't none of your business. Then you do something wrong, and it's over. It, it, it's like they get up, and they leave, and they move away from you as if, as if they never knew you. Come on, is somebody listening to me in the house? They, they will leave you like a bad habit, like a disease. Like, 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 oh, man, I love you. What the, oh, man, oh, man, the only one I love, man, this much was like my dog, man. When I was like, oh, that puppy, I just, oh, man, you, me, I hate you. you know, don't ever come near my house. Just, just like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Just, just one minute, they, they love you, and they're telling you about their sister and their problem, and they were a baby and stuff. And the next day, they don't even call you. You don't exist. 
because you did something wrong. And folks, if you want to be a real friend, the first mark is the mark of commitment. That is the true sign of a friendship. You want to know where that word comes from? Put this down on your notes someplace. Covenant. A covenant. God on Mount Sinai gave the covenant, the sacred covenant or the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue it was called, and he gave them this covenant. He said, he said, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not take my name in vain. Thou shalt remember to keep my Sabbath day holy. Honor your mother and your father. Don't steal. Don't kill. Right? He said, when you do these things, we're in fellowship. This is our covenant. This is our contract. This is how we honor one another. Anybody listening to me today? You want to have good friends, there needs to be commitment. You got to see past people's warts. I mean, you want to be somebody's friend, accept them just how they are. That's it. And you make a decision. And, and listen, let me just be honest with you. Uh, uh, here, here under your first one, there are Proverbs 18, 24. I need to uh, expositize this scripture for you. It says, a man of many companions may come to ruin. What does that mean? A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, folks, what is that saying there? A man of many companions may come to ruin. I'm going to wake some of you up tonight because you need, that, you need to be woken up. You can try to have so many friends that your life is so shallow that you don't have one real one. And sometimes that's what the devil gets you into doing. You become a man pleaser and a people pleaser. And if you two are gossiping about him, well, then I gossip too just so I can be a friend. And, 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 and I gossip about them with you because I don't have a life. And if you leave me, I won't have a life. So then I'll follow you into sin there. And before you know it, you'll be in hell with these people. Friends are committed to you and they do not make you compromise your walk with God. You don't want many companions. You want friends. There are plenty of companions. There's, there's plenty of people to fellowship with, but there's few friends. This scripture, Proverbs 18, uh, listen to this again. A man of many companions may come to ruin. That word companions actually means acquaintances. People that just, 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 I want to love everybody. I just want everybody. I want everybody to like me. It's just so important that everybody loves me. I can't have anybody not like me because I go crazy if everybody doesn't like me. And you will go crazy because you will never have a life. You will never have a life. And they in an HMO that can cover the medication. You're going to need to make it until death. I'm sorry about that last point. I lie. I'm not sorry. You with me tonight? Friendship needs a covenant. Needs an agreement. You start getting together with these people. Don't start shallow relationships on gossip, guys. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't ever become somebody's friend talking about somebody else. That, that should be a sign that uh, ding, 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 bad, 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 not real. That is a shallow friendship. If you ever find yourself talking about other people all the time in order to show that your nucleus is powerful in friendship, you are deceived. That was free. Listen to me. There it says, concentrate on quality, not quantity. Come on, are you with me? Concentrate on quality. Concentrate on quality. You want people that you are committed to and that are committed to you, that you can love them and they will love you, warts and all, funny walk and all, freckles and all, big nose and all, whatever you got and all. Fair enough? Whatever color you are, shape you are, size you are, money you got, however your education is, that they will love you and are committed. There is a covenant between you and them. And folks, it is a process to make real good friends. It's not an easy thing to do. It takes work, labor, and effort. It is a reciprocal thing. That big word means it's a give and take thing. Amen? Number two is that in order to develop lasting uh, friendships, I must be considerate. Considerate. This is probably one of the hardest ones here also. It says... Uh, Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9 says He who covers an offense promotes love But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends Then in the next verse it says Love uh, forgets mistakes Nagging about them parts the best of friends Folks, a true friend knows your failures And they don't rub it in They rub it out they, They're considerate of you They Listen to me If you want to test your friends 
Test number two is this right here. Under it, consider it. If you want to test your friends, do something wrong. Do something wrong. Cross one of their little boundaries. You'll find out like that if they're genuine or not. You'll find out like that if they're make-believe or not. You cross one of their boundaries. You just cross in the earth. Uh, bam! It, it's over. It's like, phew, the family's gone and the kids are gone. Forget the Christmas card. Give me back my stuff. Phew, the wall goes up. We're done. Listen, listen. We, listen. We are done. The, uh, don't even go there again. It's over. We're done. We recycle friendships like cheap trash. We recycle friends like, like garbage at garage sales. You stick them out on this lawn this week. Hi, please, please be my friend. And then here, I was kicked off of that last week. And so now I'm over here waiting for a friend. And, and, and now I'm in Emmaus and I'm waiting for a friend over here. I mean, and we don't know where. We, uh, folks, think about that concept. We're not considerate anymore. We're living in a throwaway type of a society. And we throw away our friends. Folks, if you want to be a real friend, you've got to be considerate. Think about that person. Accept them as they are and just love them for, for just say, hey, man, I know they're failures. You know, and I overlooked that. If somebody comes in and says, yeah, right, don't you notice that that person's kind of, yeah, yeah, so what? I mean, I'm not looking at that about it. So what? Yeah, you noticed that too, didn't you? Well, good for you. Tell them. Good for you that you noticed that, that you picked up on that. You, you're on the razor edge there again. You are the theologian. You are the psychologist. Boy, was that hard to pick out. And you found it, didn't you? Oh, real good for you. You know what I mean? Well, I just thought they're kind of funny. You know, just shut up and leave people alone. Be considerate. Be considerate of people. Just, just, if the, the second mark of a true friend is that you're considerate of people, that you love them as they are and that you accept them as they are with all their foibles and all their failures and all everything that they have. I just love them like they are. Many of us in this church, we, 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 have, we, we have been so hurt because of this garbage. And folks, I'm not trying to hurt you tonight. I'm challenging you. I, I know I got some new people here. I may even scare them right out of the church. But listen, I'm, I mean, it's important that we learn this right up front, man. We need to be considerate. You need to ask yourself, anytime, listen to me, if I'm going to be your friend and i got to be the center of attention all the time, something's wrong. Something's wrong. That's why it's so hard for the pastor to be friends because everybody passes this. And I, I passes that and can you have this pastor and this pastor? Listen to me, I don't get salads at people's houses. They break out all the nice stuff every time I come over. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. But every once in a while, I just want people just, I, just to treat me straight, man. I mean, give me a... I mean, give me the bad coffee, man. I'll drink it. Uh, give, me, uh, give me the bad coffee. Give me the, uh, yeah, get, no, 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 no. Forget the fresh one. Give me the hard donut, the one that was over the floor by the dog. That one. Give, give me that. Give me that. No, seriously, I mean that, man, because, listen to me, because it's hard to have genuine friendships if you're always trying to, uh, always trying to impress. Fair enough? I'm not trying to beat you up tonight, church, man. I'm trying to, look. Now, I mean, I'm going on this whole uh, spiritual mental health thing, and i got to shoot straight on every angle. Amen? we got to do that, right? Now, I mean, I'm not trying to hurt you. And if you feel convicted or offended by something, I'm saying, well, well then good for you. Good for you. Then, then I guess the message worked, didn't it? Didn't it? I guess it worked, and whatever you felt convicted about, don't justify it. Change it. That, that's all. Listen, as soon as you accept it, boom, you have the power to change it. Boom, change it, and now I'm on the straight and narrow again. That's it. I, boy, I error corrected that. Now I'm on my way back on the right. Amen? Somebody say amen so I can keep preaching. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, if you want to test a friend, just fail. Do something wrong. Buckle up, please. Buckle up now. You, I, you need to buckle up at this point. If you have your seatbelt in your pew, just, just, just buckle up. There should be a little button in front of you that will activate your airbag. In case the church crash lands on this next point, please use the person in front of you as a flotation device. <laughs> oh, man. You ready for the next point? In order to develop lasting friendships, I must be confidential. Now, don't lean forward, because that could break your neck when that airbag pops out. <laughs> I saw some people go like, mmm. <laughs> You must be confidential. Come on, does anybody listen to me? That, that means secret. Secret. That means, uh, that, listen to me, what will destroy friends more than anything else is, is, is that insatiable desire to go 
Manny, you, you ever been with somebody and they talk, really? No, Manny, you just, you can't wait to get to a phone, boy. You, you, you just need it, really? No, 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 that's enough. I heard enough. Yeah. Just, 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 you say, man, what a time not to have a cell phone. You know, <laughs> I got to wait till I get home. A true friend is confidential, man. You want to know if you're a true friend? Self-test. Come on, activate him. Self-test. When people tell you stuff, if you got this burning desire in your heart for another one of your friends that you know that you just got to tell this about to pray for? You need me to repeat that? And, and Do you have a burning desire to tell somebody else? Don't you dare cover that with the word prayer because God calls it something together different. Well, I just wanted them to pray about that. That's alone. That's gossip with a twist. That's gossip with it. Somebody tells you something, you shut up and you pray about it. And you that's what's going to make that friendship last. You see, folks, we, we seem to be so ignorant that we don't learn the spirit of gossip. This is how gossip works. You're my best friend. And I'm your best friend. But I have a best friend that's not your best friend. And they have a best friend that's not our best friend. And their best friend don't even like me. But that's my best friend. And they like somebody, and it's probably going to end up back at the friend that me and you talked about. Is everybody following me? How many of you know that principle? I am your best friend. I love you. I, I, I would die for you. I would, take, I would take an arrow for you. Not a bullet, but an arrow. I would take an arrow. I would take an arrow for you, right? I mean, of course, nobody, me and you, we, we, who, boom, 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 there, us, me, we, you know, man, I mean, if God probably, had, I mean, he probably made a mistake and we should have been like one, like stuck together, twins, we, me and you, right? Are you so connected, me and you, boom, 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 we think the same, we, woo, everything, right? But as soon as you leave, there's this fire that goes on and you say, oh, I got to tell somebody, I, oh, hallelujah, mm, and I, oh, yes, Lord, woo, help me pray, God, because, yeah, Lord, I, I just want to, you know, ooh, yeah, it's just, and let me tell you, we, we need to pray about something, y'all. We need to pray about this, and let me, let me just give you some details. I'm not going to say it all, but let me give you enough details to make your ears itch. Yeah. Oh, it's real funny. See you on the other end. Now everybody like, come back. <laughs> Confidential, folks. There's the story of these three pastors that finally trusted each other. <laughs> and uh, they finally went up to a cabin. I said, okay, so all of us can confess, right? They said, yeah, yeah. And nobody's going to, no, 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 we're right here. Our three men of God. Mm. Glory, you know. <laughs> but one says, all right, I, I'll go first, man. I, I you know, I... My church is spirit-filled, and you know that. You say, yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, well, but I mean, like, sometimes I have, like, uh, like a couple of glasses of vodka before I go up to the platform. I mean, that kind of spirit. But I said, no, really? So yeah, yeah, you're ready, but you aren't. No, 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 no. You know, and the first guy comes and said, my problem is that I drink. You know, and, 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 and he says, and it's overwhelming. And the other guy comes up and says, my problem is that I love. both took a look at him and says, okay, I said, my problem is lust. I said, my problem is that I drink. What's your problem? He says, <laughs> okay, we said our problem. Now, I mean, what's your problem? I said, my problem is that I lust and his problem is that he drinks. I mean, what is your problem? He said, my problem is I love the gossip and I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> I, love, I can't wait to get out of this. I can't wait to get out of this cabin. My cell phone's in my trunk. <laughs> I'm making some calls. I, I, I just, why? Because, folks, confidential. And listen to me, though, church. And I'm glad you're having fun. I am. I am. But there also needs to be some confession and repentance. Because we dropped the ball in this area. 
I've had people come to me and they'll say that they're sorry about something that they did. That's fine. Don't worry about it. No big thing. Don't worry about it. Sometimes I wonder if I could teach them that illustration. I know that some of you have heard it. Where they say, now take I, I take a pillowcase and smack it right here in this room. And all the feathers fly out. Then they say, now get a giant fan over here and turn it on. Turn the fan on and then open the front doors and let the feathers go out. I said, when you got that, that is what you do, is that you spread that to all the people that connect. So now, now, if you want to reconcile, go find all the feathers. See where I'm coming from? When you say something and you heard something, you have now taken something to somebody else and you want to come back and come back to you. I'm sorry, me. I love you. You know, okay, fine. But what happened to all the people you know? See, I may never see them again. Fair enough. Folks, you want real friends? confidentiality. And if you need to repent of that burning in your heart, because it happens to us, because it's natural. I got a secret, I won't tell, you know, no, ooh, you know. It, it, there's something natural in us that, that has to tell, but man, I mean, just stop doing it. Repent of it. It is, it is such a gross sin. It is such a gross sin. It will hurt your friendship every time. Uh, look at the scripture there for this. It says, uh, Proverbs chapter 11 and 13, it says, a gossip betrays a confidence. But a trustworthy man keeps a secret. A gossip betrays, betrays a confidence. Listen to me. If you ever want to do that test, a gossip betrays a confidence. If somebody confided in you and you took it forward, you are a gossip. If you do it more than once per day, you're a busybody. If you practice that long, a lot of people are going to get hurt and you're going to hell. That was the end of that point. I'll share some fun stuff next week. <laughs> Number four is that to develop a lasting friendship, I must be candid. C-A-N-D-I-D. Candid. Folks, next to that, put in brackets, on the level. To be candid is to be true, is to be honest, is to be straight up. A candid person always shoots straight. They'll always tell you how it is. They'll always just say, listen to me. People... The problem today is, is that there's always an interest on our part. Well, if I want to continue being a world's friend, well, then I have, to, I have to agree, right? I have to agree with everything that she tells me, right? And that's where we get in trouble, is, is that we make friends, and then in order to keep our friends, we're so scared of losing them that we'll agree with stuff. But when you're candid, you're honest with your friends. You say, no, you know, no, that's not the way it is. You know, no, that's not how I say it. Yes, yeah. What do you mean that's not how it is? Of course you yeah, Listen, I love you and I want to love you and I want to be your friend. I don't want to ruin our friendship, but I'm in disagreement with that with you. I need to be straight here. I'm not in agreement with that. I mean, I don't agree with how you see that. You see, you see, friends need to be able to be honest with each other. They need to be able to shoot straight and be on the level. Now, now don't confuse that with speaking. The oh, yeah, well, I just tell the truth, man. I tell, you know, God's word says speak the truth in love. Speaking truth in love and and, and so, I mean, please learn how to be candid. Some of us are missing out on great fellowship and on great friends because we don't know how to be honest. I mean, if the wind blows this way, we all go that way. If it blows this way, we all go that way. Nobody ever stands up and says, no, hey, listen, I'm not in agreement with that. No, I'm not in agreement with that. Come on, somebody say amen, right? Just, no, I'm not in agreement with that. And I still love you. I still love you. I'm just not in agreement. I love you enough that I'm going to be honest with you. There's no interest. You see, sometimes it's so scary because... There's something to lose. So that's the reason that we agree so easily. On being honest. Uh, let me read to you uh, Proverbs uh, 27 verses 5 and 6. says, Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Can you see that? Wounds from a friend can be trusted. An honest answer is a sign of true friendship. Proverbs 24, 26. Isn't that sweet? An honest answer is a sign of a true friend. Folks, I see people and they're talking to me and they got like, like uh, you know, little white stuff hanging out over here. Uh, maybe uh, they still got a piece of their pork chop in their tooth. I just stop and say, yo, mira, uh, come here. Get yourself a little toothpick and clean your mouth and talk to me. I'm getting ready to laugh at you here, right? And just, and just tell them that. I just, listen, man, 
I mean, I release them. I mean, if I let them go and fellowship with, hi, how you doing? Yeah, I, got, I, I got like this thing in their fellowship with the Holy. Then somebody, then they walk by me and I say, come on, man, why didn't you tell me, man? I embarrassed myself in front of 70 people. You know what I mean? I had a piece of broccoli sticking out of my cheek. You know what I mean? And mayonnaise on my nose. Right? Because a true, because a true friend will tell you. Folks, come on, right? A true friend will just tell you, man, this is, I mean, this is what's up. Here are the three rules of being candid. Compliment in public. Compliment in public. And you're going to have to squeeze this into that one small spot because I use this landscape uh, format for this. And correct in private. I didn't hear hardly enough amen for that. Compliment in public and correct in private. Don't blow your friends out of the water in public. Now, now listen, I know you say, well, Pastor Jim, isn't that what you do every week? You know what? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of, I do. Sometimes I'll rebuke, I'll correct. Yeah. But that's what God's word is for. It says that. And that's why you're in a seated position. And that's why you come here so you can hear the truth, right? Okay, so this is more like a learning experience. And usually I try to get band-aids and the mercuricomb and gauze pads and, and cast so that by the time that you leave, you'll go, okay, Pastor Jim, we'll see you next week. <laughs> oh, oh, fine. Oh, oh really, I'm fine. God is good, right? All the time. Okay, look at this. Uh, compliment in public and correct in private. Never rebuke a friend until you've proven. Write this down. That you also are open to their rebuke. Did you hear that? Never rebuke a friend until you've proven to them that you also are open to rebuke. That's part of the reason why pastors don't have that many friends is because we are the authority and so people usually don't step to us. And they're scared that when they do that we usually step back with 382,000 scriptures and defend them. It's kind of a lonely place sometimes because we have to go find our friends someplace else. Sometimes. Close, close friends. I mean, people in the ministry that we can I mean, talk to and stuff like that and just kind of get our... But um, never rebuke a friend until you've proven that you also are open. And ask yourself that question. You know, sometimes we in the ministry have developed this little spirituality about us where we're always right. And the same thing happens in the pews where there's small pockets of you that you just right. And you can woo, 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 woo. But if it ever came back to you, cut them off. Come on. Money, you follow me? You do not begin to rebuke anybody until you have accepted that you can receive even from that person. You say, hey, listen, I can be open with you, and you can be open with me. I can give, and I promise you I'm committed to you. I can receive. Fair enough? And, and I know that that's a hard thing to do. That's why we, uh, we as pastors try to walk in a circumspect type of manner so that we don't have to violate ourselves. That's why you see many other ministers, and I'll just tell you right now, they are not going to be as blatant as I am. They're not going to be as clear. They're not going to be as open. They're not going to be as transparent. There's going to be this air of spirituality where, where I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to me because I don't need this. I'm talking to you, but you know me better than that. There is an honesty in our friendship here and in our fellowship that you know that I, too, am growing in the Lord so that I, I try to practice these same things same proper principles of life in my life too and I know that that's hard sometimes I've had other pastors say that's why all your people step to you and walk out and tell you and talk about you and stuff like that because you don't put no fear and respect into them and I said no I said the ones I have I'm keeping because they're going to be powerful men and women of God so I'm not worried about that I mean I'm not worried about those that walk away because they got mad okay and okay you follow me and correct them when they're no no, 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 no. But you thought you had that one. So the E for effort is there. Correct them when they're up, not when they're down. You do not kick somebody when they're down. Wife comes in, I've been working all day long, I just, just, I just start nagging and bragging. Man comes in, look at this house. What is this right here? Sesame place? You know what I mean? Just, just nagging and bragging. And they walk in. You do not, you do not correct people when they're down. And when they're up and you correct them, 
you do it in the spirit of love, not to destroy them. Because then other children say, oh, you see, so then every time I am happy, all you do is bring up all my points. No, I just wanted to talk to you about something. I didn't want to catch you while you were down and kick you. And at least if you're up, then you'll be able to handle it and take it, you know, I mean, broaden your shoulders a bit. Fair enough, folks? Everybody corrects everybody all the time. The whole question is, do we do it at the right time? And the right time is not when people are down, but when they're up. I mean, who wants to be kicked if they know they're down, right? And the uh, next one is, uh, number five is to develop a lasting friendship. I must be constructive. Constructive. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Folks, if you want to surround that word and put these words there, to encourage, to build, to lift up, to edify. The word construct, listen, constructive means to construct or to build up. Not to destruct, is to demolish, is to tear down. Destruction. Construction is to build up, is to fortify. If you want to be a friend, put that word there. I mean, to fortify somebody, to build them up, to edify them, to lift them up. Those are the positive words that you need to learn in friendship. If you want to develop a friendship, anybody can find the bad stuff, but can you be constructive? Can you lift a friend up? Amen? Are you learning anything tonight? Okay, that's, that's the important thing. You wait till you hear the sermon I got Sunday morning. I'm saving my voice for that one. I'm telling you, it is slam dunking, man. It is, well, anyway, I just, just wanted to tease you there. And then number six. By the way, I had a dream that, that this is not a joke, but you may think it's funny. But I had a dream that I had all my tools out over here. Honestly. Me and Willie and Richard, <clears throat> me, Willie and Richard, Stephen was there, and I don't know why Kayla was there and not Ray, but, you know, I don't know. It's his dream, you know? A dream. But Kayla was there, and we had pots and pans all over there. Big, giant ones. Giant. I mean, spaghetti pans and everything. We're drilling holes in them and putting bolts in there, turning them into a band instrument. And then we gave them to our kids, and we opened a hallelujah in this dream, and all the kids are playing on these pots and pans instruments everything and I got up there on the platform and I said folks today I want to welcome our new worship group to you it's called Iron Sharpens Iron these guys are cooking yeah, I'm serious I'm serious I'm serious they, they, it, was, it was so stupid it was so stupid I said these guys are on fire you know what I mean they're cooking you know these guys are really cooking and I was crazy so I told my son he said yeah dad I do that so now he's got pots and pans in his room right Debbie and they're, they're, they're clanking on pans and everything just honestly they're going to make music and we're going to call it Iron Sharpens Iron so then I, all I told him, I said, but there must be a gospel message. He said, all right, Dad, we'll make noise for half hour. And I said, Jesus. I said, no, 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 some kind of testimony. So anyway, constructive, build them up. Here goes the test to see if you're a, a constructive person. These, uh, these aren't in there. These are free. Here's the test. Can you rejoice in your friend's victory? Or do you get jealous? Can you rejoice? Do you, that's all right. That's, that's, that's fine. Or do you get jealous about that? Just kind of, hmm, they got a new car. Hmm. Well, that won't last long with those kids. Right? <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know, you know. Sure, it's a nice house, but you see the walls? Right? <laughs> right? Come on now. Everybody follow me? That's, that's a way to test to see if you're a good friend. And folks... Listen to me, if some of this stuff is hurting you, it's only because it really hurts all of us. Fair enough? We need to be that way, not be jealous. Can you rejoice in your friend's victory? Truly rejoice it. Praise God for you. Praise God that you got that credit. Praise God that they gave you that. No, I haven't got mine yet, but hallelujah for you. Praise God for you. Learn how to rejoice in their victories. And finally, my last point. Anyone know what time it is, by the way? Okay. Finally, to develop a lasting friendship, I must be consistent. Somebody say amen to that. Consistent. Now here it says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. What that means is that sometimes our friends will treat us better than our own family. How many of you know that's true? Our family has abandoned us and left us behind, right? And sometimes our friends are the only ones that stay there with us, right? Friends will walk out on your family, right? Learn how to be consistent, folks. Consistence means uh, to keep on keeping on. It means, man, I mean, I'm there. When everybody walks out, I'll walk back in. When everybody sees through you, I'll see you through. Right? I mean, I mean that, that is a consistent friend. My friends 
are Colgate brand. Now, I know some of you know this because I shared this with you, but I keep one of these in my office because this is my favorite kind of friend. My favorite friends are Colgate friends. And I'll tell you why right now. Because they come through in a squeeze. Did you get that? I could do it again in slow motion for you. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> You get that? Come on, that, that, was, that was innovative. That, I was trying to do... Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> they come through. Colgate friends come through in a squeeze, folks. That's a consistent friend. When there's nothing else left, they'll come through for you, man. Just, 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 it's, it's all done. It's, it's, look, it's, it's done, and, and yet there, there will be... I, I, I can almost bet you that, that just... Because if this illustration doesn't work, I would be so embarrassed. But, you know, because friends, they don't, well, yeah, there's just a little bit there. But they'll come through in a squeeze. I'll break my thumb, but they'll come through in a squeeze. And that's why I love Colgate Friends, man. That's the kind of friendships we need. Church, God didn't make you to be lonely. God didn't make you to be lonely. And because he put people on the earth does not mean that we abuse them. We need to stop throwing away our friendships. And if you want to do that properly, here's what you do. Slow down on how you make friends. It's okay to have an acquaintance. Come on, I mean, people could, I love you, man. No, 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 come on in. I love, I, you, you're the man. I, I love you. You know, yeah. come on, tell me about your kids. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. you know, no, no, I don't know you from a bag of chips. But I'll be your acquaintance now. I mean, I'll learn how to get to know you. Then I'll build a friendship. Don't do them so superficially that, that you have so many companions that nobody's a friend to you. So many companions, nobody can be honest with you. So many people following you, nobody can look you straight in the eye and say, yo, I think that you dropped the ball on that. Fair enough? We all need real friends. God's word says, you know, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, closer than family. And that friend is Jesus, folks. And let me just tell you that God is trying to model for us. I know that this didn't sound like a real spiritual lesson today, but it's spiritual in the sense that, that we need to begin to walk this. And I want you to take that home. And if you've got teen kids or something like that, you need to be sharing this with them. I'm telling you, parents, you need to take this to your kids. Those poor kids that we have, they're not faithful to each other. They'll blame it on Jason, and they'll blame it on this one. And when Jason's not around, they'll blame it on Timmy. And when he's not around, it was Josh. When he's not around, and listen to it, they'll blame it on anybody small, Ray or Louie or anybody. All right? they'll, they'll, uh, they'll find somebody. They will blame shift. They have no commitment to each other. They have no commitment. It's, oh, man, I love you and I love you. And when they, it's cut. Another one comes to the house. If he's got Dreamcast, ah, you know what I mean? That, that's it, man. It's over, man. It's all about games and who's got what. And you need to take this message home and say, how are your friends, man? I mean, there needs to be a commitment to them. You know, there needs to be honesty with them. Why do you follow? I, I stop and think about our kids. They get into so much trouble because all they do is follow each other into trouble. Uh, just follow each other into trouble. And somebody's got to be there and say, who's going to be honest? And just say, no, man, I'm not going to do that, man. No, man, I'm not going to do it. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Father in heaven, I come before you, Lord. I thank you for this church. And folks, there's a couple of minutes here left. And listen to me. If you're someone here and you just, you know that you just need to build on your friendships. We got about seven or eight minutes. I just want to encourage you to come to the altar and pray for a couple of minutes. Say, Jesus, please help me to be a better friend. Help me to be a real friend. Help me to be an honest friend. Help me to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Help me, help me to be a committed friend. Help me to be a compassionate friend. Help me to be a considerate friend. Help me to be a confidential friend, God. Help me that when people tell me something, they don't have to worry about me. That they don't have to worry about me telling you. Thank you for all those of you that are bold enough to just come on down and just, and just say, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you.